right, strap yourselves in because this might get ugly. Welcome to part two of being shipwrecked on a beach. So you might be looking and thinking, well, you don't look very shipwrecked. So start by addressing the elephant in the room or the elephant in the road, in the road, in the boat, or more precisely, why the elephant is in the wrong boat. So I've got some notes in front of me because the footage I put on that part one of this was just some raw footage of going and looking at my boat that's shipwrecked on the beach. Um, yeah, that it's. If I didn't put that as I recorded it there, I regret saying some of the things. I, said. Well, I don't regret saying it, but yeah, I knew it wasn't going to be easy to put it like that. However, if I never just put that, what I would have done was what I'm doing now, and I'd have gone away from the situation, scratched my head for a bit, and thought, how are we going to fix it? And it would have never got. It would have never been seen. So. I knew doing it was going to get me a bit of backlash. So. I do have some notes, so if you see me looking down, <laughs> I'm trying to record this so it makes some sense. So, yeah, I'll start with why I'm not on the shipwrecked boat, shall I? Today at least, anyway. So, a few points. It's wet, it's dangerous, there's no electricity. Today it's raining, so... You know, taking everything outside the boat to get to the parts I need to get to don't make any sense because everything's just going to get more wet. Um, and I've been there already a few times. The first time being overnight, as I explained in the last in the last video. Um, I did what people do. This this is my boat. I need to stay on it. I need to protect it. I need to protect my things it was a dumb idea i woke up freezing cold um so yeah what what i then did was i spent an hour roaming the streets then a few hours hiding on a campsite because the streets are the nicest place to roam at whatever time it was in the morning um and then i spent an hour and a half trying to hitchhike to marseille where i got questioned by the police for 40 minutes because um allegedly shouldn't be stood by the side of the road uh, before very kindly a woman saw a strange man wrapped in a blanket because the blanket was the only dry thing I could find on the boat um, and brought me to where I am now so why did I need to come here on that on that day as I mentioned in the last video I could have sat on the boat for as long as I could but you know there's no there's nothing to eat um, yeah, I could have probably gone and found water or whatever, but as I mentioned, no electricity, all the rest of it, and no money, nothing. So I'd been waiting on this boat for a week to sell a tent, and that was going to be some income, the some money. So when I woke up early hours of the morning, you know, my priority is I need to go get that money. Like, I can't do anything in any of this without any. And without any, you know, there's things like eating and all the rest of it to, to think about or getting the bus backwards and forwards to get stuff off the boat, etc. So that morning after the night of sleeping on the boat, getting back here to get, to sell that tent and to have a little bit of money in order to be able to do anything, really. So... Yeah, money, money. I'm not too good at looking down and reading my notes. Bear with me, I'll, I'll do my best. So then, why have I been not on that boat the, the whole time? Why was I not on it when, it when it hit the rocks? All the rest of it. I've mentioned already in another video the night I actually, well, the day I actually got off it after a really bad night on it and by a really bad night, I mean really bad night. It was dangerous getting off. In the process of trying to get off, I lost the kayak. Um, and it's not a case of I haven't been back to it since because I have. Um, however, and I'm gonna say it a few times, I don't like saying it, but I'm gonna have to say it to make it make sense. But things to consider is money, trains, so I've been back to it on the day I recorded the last video and we're talking a 20, 22, well, 25 euro round trip to go get some stuff off it. So I tried to go get the stuff I really needed. Um, 
and the time it takes as well. The dinghy too, if you've watched this before, you might, I think I posted it. Obviously the videos aren't up to date, but uh, a dinghy got stolen off the beach and trying to get to and from the boat on a paddle board when the weather's not good, it's not as easy as people might think. It's actually quite hard to get on the boat in, in waves from a paddle board. And if you're carrying anything you really don't want to drop in the water, it's, it's a challenge. Um, as I say, there's been bad weather and I've been actively here trying to look for some work, trying to find some money in order to go save the boat that's at anchor. So I'll quickly touch on why, I, why this other boat happened. I have mentioned it a bit in a video before. Um, it weren't a case of I knew that boat was going to have a problem because I didn't. I hoped it wouldn't. Um, but I didn't have a way to take it out of the water and I'm not going to go greatly into detail in it in this but taking this one on was meant I was going to do it a lot earlier than I ended up doing it and it might have been an opportunity to still make some money because I was stuck where I was so have I missed any parts there? I don't think so but what I will say as well is leading up to the leading up to that happening you know the the few months before but especially the weeks before it going um, I, I always say trying to survive there's limits to it but I will what I will say is the week I was here before the boat hitting the rocks I didn't have anything like and I definitely didn't just have spare money to, you know, be going backwards and forwards. And I tr I wanted to get back over there. There's not been many days that the weather was suitable to go do anything anyway. But, yeah, I'll say it because it's easy for someone to jump in, watch a little bit and, and, and not really know. So I'll just say it quickly so that it's said. Um, so, yeah. Boat ends up on the rocks. So that brings us to like now. And yeah, I need a plan. So why am I not at the boat today? Again, as I've mentioned, I could be there today, but it's raining. There's not a lot I could I could be doing. And I need a plan. I need electricity, because there's no electricity on the boat. Um, I, need, I need to work out what I'm gonna do. And sitting on a boat on the, on the beach, isn't isn't i'm not I, there's only so much i can do you know i can't put it on there put it back in the water on my own um and if if we're going to lose money in all of this which inevitably we are and all the rest of it does it help losing my mind and going through a lot of discomfort for no reason also it's worth noting that it's um well it's illegal to camp on a beach so there's that to worry about and I've questioned quite a bit if I'm going to end up in a Marseille police station soon and hopefully not um, but yeah I could I could go sit on there but at the minute 40 euros is is what I've got and spending 20 of that coming to and from or even 10 well half of that to just go and be on there but not be able to actually get anything done because I haven't got the things I need just doesn't make sense so that's that's why today at least I'm here and I'm trying to I'm charging um, all the power tools that I might need for what's upcoming um, I'm making sure my phone's got battery because people need to get in touch with me and I will say quickly that yeah people are people are aware that the what's happened so yeah why am I why am I <laughs> why am I explaining all of this and I'm just reading what I put down as a heading why am I explaining all of this and have I just suddenly gained an attitude problem no if you if you watch just before you're probably thinking you seem a little uh, annoyed today it's not it's not the case um, 
Usually the videos go onto YouTube and I put them on and that's as far as it goes. However, in this situation, and another reason I've been here is trying to reach out for a bit of help, like advice. Um, and people will say I've done the wrong thing, but actually putting that video on the other day turned out to probably be the right thing to do and I'll get onto it later on, but some people have reached out, etc. And it was probably the first tool I had in my tool belt um, was that I've got this YouTube channel. However, Facebook, and we probably all know this, post in there, for the majority, the feedback has been pretty, pretty good. And just before everyone clicks off, because I forgot to mention it at the start, I'm gonna go through what the plan is and the options are, but I'm just getting this bit out of the way. Um, feedback mostly through Facebook has been pretty good, posted in some groups. The person I maybe had a little bit of rant about in the last video actually emailed me, so if you are watching this, I really appreciate that. Um, sincere apology was the title of the email uh, to explain that, yeah, it was a bit of a misunderstanding and obviously it's my boat that's on the rocks, so that's good. However, for all the good feedback there's been, there's been the people, as I say, that jump in for 10 minutes and then suddenly know everything about you. I say this all the time, we're not all, we're not all in the same boat. There's people, someone's comment, they might be watching this uh, now. Um, I lost interest the minute you said that you, uh, you, you've been on another boat, like, okay, fine, but, um, it's quite hard because people watch a part of something, it's never come up to them before the channel probably and they click on and then, oh well, no insurance on a boat, oh. but they feel the need to tell you why you've annoyed them in the first place. So somebody also said, oh it's convenient, commenting is turned off, commenting weren't turned off, it was just on for review. The reason being, I, I I don't want to be arguing with people on the internet, and I won't. And on YouTube, there's actually been no bad comments, so it's fine. Like, but yeah, no bad comments on YouTube. Uh, right, so that leads us on to what we're we gonna do. We've got a beat a boat on the beach. And we need to sort of manage the manage the crisis. So I'm not sure if this episode uh, thumbnail will be manage the crisis, or it might have been a uh, beach in my boat to get YouTube views. But I'll get onto that at the end, and that's not what I did, obviously. But it has been mentioned. So option number one, we could run. We could just run, pretend none of it ever happened, and don't look back. So. The pros of that would be, it's not dangerous. We're not doing anything that's risky, not potentially getting hurt in the process of doing whatever might be risky. Uh, so it's it's not dangerous. Just uh, pretend it never happened. Obviously it did, it's on YouTube. So, so yeah. <laughs> uh, short term priorities. The things that have been happening over the last few months slash weeks haven't just gone away because I've uh, washed, uh, had a boat wash up onto the beach. Like they're all still real things. Like where am I going to find money? Um, and money, I will post an episode because I keep saying I'll explain it in more detail. But maybe I'll explain it at the end of this at this time. Um, but yeah, I still need to eat. I still need to still need to survive still need to be finding a job and all the rest of it and now i've got this big crisis that's going to take some time to sort out if i ran and didn't have to sort the crisis out i'm just imagining how many people are clicking off because i mentioned run i'm not saying i'm going to do it um then i you know can focus on life and not how am i going to save both another pro is could evade the cost potentially depending if we got caught but this is going to cost a lot of money and 
None of us are naive enough to think that the boats you see shipwrecked. Quite often fairly small ones. Maybe people in similar situations to me. And they've, you know, stripped everything off it so it's not traceable. And they've probably done it because trying to get rid of the boat is expensive if the boat's damaged. So it would evade the cost and another pro it would save time a bit like the the one i've said about having to go on with stuff but you know it's going to take some time to do all of this the cons of running it's wrong like morally it's wrong to do that um it's illegal and as i mentioned i say prison it's not my ideal next destination from here um, I'd lose a lot so yeah maybe I don't uh, if I got away with it I wouldn't have the financial implications of what would inevitably be a lot of money um, but equally I would lose a lot of valuable stuff that's on that boat and again it's wrong I know I said it once, but that's the main point in it. It's wrong. How I'm still after going to have to try have a sailing channel on YouTube and everything else, and still going to need people to take me a little bit seriously. And I left the boat on the beach. So if I did that, what would happen? I imagine it's a popular beach, so. The boat would probably get moved by the authorities pretty quickly. All of my personal stuff, you know, would be rummaged through and you'd hope just with a shovel put in a bin and nobody's looking for all your stuff. Not that there's anything to hide, but, you know, imagine... I don't know, imagine you left your house for some reason and couldn't get back and someone was going to go into it and just... All your things that are in there, you have no access over what people are doing with it. It's the best way I can explain it. Um, conclusion on that one the run option is probably it's a bad idea and what's the likelihood of getting caught well it's pretty high if we'd sailed here from you know somewhere else you know I'm sure ports talk I'm sure people know that's my boat well they do but I'll get to that later but um, just for argument's sake 